Occasionally you might be required to take the pH of a soil sample. With the simple pH test kit that we have, um, it's easily taken into the field. It's based on color comparison, so that we're actually looking for a development of color with a universal indicator solution. The universal indicator solution takes into account the extremes on the pH scale. And then we're basically going to look at color development of the solution above the soil. Very easy to do. You take your sample from your soil and you're going to fill the vial to the line that's marked number one. So you're looking at maybe about a gram of soil or so. about the one line and then you're going to fill to the number five line with the pH indicator solution. Okay. The pH indicator solution will encompass the pH um, on the alkaline scale and also on the acidic scale. Okay. We'd like to cover the end with a piece of plastic so that when we shake it we might not actually be transferring the pH of our fingers to the pH of our sample. Okay. Often you will have a little stopper that you can put in. If you don't, just a piece of plastic okay, and shake for approximately a minute. Once you've let your sample settle for approximately a minute, then you're going to use the color comparison chart. Okay. Uh, what you're doing is comparing the color development of the universal indicator solution with the color that you have that's developed in the vial. Okay. You want to hold it away from your card so that you have a little bit of light that passes between the vial and your color comparison. And then you're looking at the general overall hue of the color. So as you can see, this particular development of color is closer to the purple than it is to the blue. So in this case, we'd probably call that a pH of 8. If we were to look at the second vial, we're looking at, again, kind of a, a greenish development. If you've got a lot of clay in your sample, you might need to let the sample settle a little bit longer because the clays stay much longer in suspension. It's closest to the dark green, which would give us a pH value, again, a general pH of around a value of 6. One of the tests you might also be asked to perform in the field is a calcareousness test. This is to look for the free carbonates in the rock, as this might be a limiting factor to some species of trees growth or some species of vegetation growth. And it also indicates that um, we have those free carbonates that are probably on the limestone base of sorts. So when you have a soil that's taken from the shield area, what you're probably going to get is a reaction that is anywhere from something that's non-calcareous, where your hydrochloric acid does not react with the soil sample. You can see slight bubbling in there, so we're looking at probably something that's non-calcareous to a weakly calcareous material in this dish. As you play with your soils and gradually start to see the different soil types, what you're going to find is that you might change that react. You might see a different reaction in different soils. So here we can start to see a little bit more of a bubbling, and you will start to hear a little bit more of a hissling, hissing and cracking. Okay, so that we are in a, the intermediate stages where we just call something moderately calcareous to a point where you might be looking at something which is in the ranges of um, strongly calcareous to extremely calcareous, of which we don't have a sample of. But something like this sample will probably show you that we're getting a lot more foaming that's occurring. We get a little thick foam. So in this case, we're probably looking at a range from something that's strongly calcareous to getting on the borderline very strongly calcareous. Okay, we don't have an extremely cal extremely calcareous reaction, but if we mixed a bit of baking soda and think about the volcanoes you made back in grade five and the vinegar and reactions you have with the baking soda, you're looking at something that's going to be extremely calcareous within that case. 